here. Yeah. Anybody excited about 2019? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, so listen, I'm going to ask you to stand, with, stand on your feet with us as we enter into this time of praise and worship. Hallelujah. All right, listen, we're going to take it to church tonight. Just a little bit. We're going to have a little, little, bit, of, a little bit of church, a little bit of church. Is that all right? I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. No, no. One minute, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Come on, put those hands together. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. 
Thank you for the freedom, you, freedom, to you. freedom, 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 God, because you allowed us to be free. Because you allowed us to be free, God, we want to give you what you are deserving of. You're deserving of our worship. You are deserving of our glory, all glory. You're the deserving of all praise. And so tonight, God, we lay aside our titles, we lay aside our weights, we lay aside our differences, and we press into your presence. We press into your presence. We press into your presence. And we thank you now for the freedom that you have allowed to flow through this place, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, God, tonight we say that you deserve it.
Yeah. You deserve it. And when you don't know what else to say, you can just say, Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
God, because of your grace and your mercy, oh God. God, your word said that thy loving kindness is better than life, oh God. And God, we thank you for thy loving kindness. And if the people of God believe this prayer, oh God, we will go up into worship right now, oh God. Reach your hands, oh God. Tell God, thank you. Lift the soul, sweet and dear, oh God. We thank you, God. We worship you for your word in the name of God. We ask, oh God, that you continue, oh God, to give them that zeal, oh God. Yes, God. Yes, oh God, that we may have that zeal, oh God. And God, because they are blessed, oh God, his people is blessed because we abide to the word that you have given the leaders of this house, oh God. And for that, we say thank you. And God, we love you and we love you, oh God.
so sick of my life. I'm just so frustrated and overwhelmed and just bogged down. It seems like no matter how many steps forward I take, I just seem to keep being knocked back down. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just hate my life right now, God. When are you gonna give me a break? I'm sick of it. I deserve more. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, I guess. It's a beautiful day we're having, huh? I mean, I guess. And, you know, we come out here, you got the sunshine, the grass is green, and you know, it's just like you see God in everything, everywhere. You believe it? I mean, are you some type of minister or something? Well, no, no, I wouldn't say that I'm a minister per se, but I just enjoy, you know, I, I, I can sense and tell when people are dealing with, dealing with things and I just see you seem a little heavy and a little weighty. You wanna talk about it? I mean, is talking really gonna help? Sometimes, you know, yeah, it does. You know, it's good to talk about it and get it out. And you sometimes may even find the answer and just keep talking. I'll be listening in. I mean, I guess. All right. So let's go. I mean, I guess I've just been having a really rough year all year long. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I lost my grandmother. She was more like a mother to me. I mean, my mother abandoned me, so my grandmother had to raise me. She was pretty much all that I had. And shortly after that, I lost my job. I got in a car accident. I lost my car. I'm behind on bills, and I'm almost about to be homeless. Wow, so do you have family? Do you have friends here? I mean, I'm only close to like one person in my family. Um, friends, I guess maybe there's like one person I can call on. Oh wow, that sounds like a lot. So basically you're walking around here and you're dealing with all of that. That, that is really a lot. But do you know that if you can change your internal state, if you can change that, that things around you would tend to change too? Do you believe that? I mean, really? How, how, do, you, how do you do that? Basically, it's all in your mind. It's, it's, it's a mindset. It's all in changing your mindset. You know, the Bible, it tells us to think on those things which are lovely, to think on those things which are pure, honest, and true. So, you know, a lot of times we find ourselves focused on our current conditions or situations, what we see in front of us, but that's not really true. Does that make sense? I mean, I guess, so you're pretty much saying that what I see and feel happening around me is, is not really, that's not true? No, no. And I know that it may be a little bit puzzling, but when you think about it, it can be happening, but you can, it, it, it's up to you how you respond to it, okay? Okay. Make sense? Makes okay, sense. so yeah, you lost your brother. <laughs> we all have lost something or someone, right? Anybody? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we've all lost someone or something. So with that, you know, it brings about feelings of despair and grief. But again, if you know, first of all, if you have a relationship with the father, you would know that that person is probably in a better, is more than likely in a better place. And you know that he sent the Holy Spirit as a comforter, right? Right. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. So with it, again, you can, you can change that, honestly. You can change it. You cannot, because a lot of times we focus more on the negative aspect. We focus more on the negative aspect. So what I want to kind of help you with today is to not always look at the negative. Okay. So let's see if we can go. One, one thing that I found in this life and one thing that I believe is that he's already equipped us with what we need to make it through this life. Really? Yeah. So you mean to tell me that I have what it takes? You have what it takes. It's in you. Yeah. But the thing is, sometimes we have to go through a lot of crud stuff, if yeah. you will. We got to go through a lot of stuff to get to it. So I see again that you're so heavy. So let's go through. Let's go through it. Let's see what you got going on here. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, Jesus, how do you make it through? How long have you been working around with this mess? I mean, pretty much all year long. All year? Probably oh. longer than that. And look at this, right on top. Fear. You know, a lot of us, we deal with that. Actually, a lot of the negative emotions and stuff that we deal with is rooted in fear. So, we see that fear here is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. 
So, what are some things that you you feel as though you fear? Um, or what has what are, what are some things that fear has kept you from doing? Because it'll keep you stuck. Yeah, it will. It's kept me from moving forward. Um, you know, just really just chasing after my dreams. I do have dreams. I know it may not seem like it, but it's it's really kept me bound in that sense. Um, I I'm afraid to kind of get close to people because it seems like you know I've just so lost everyone. So that explains distrust. Hmm. Mm. Who in here have a hard time trusting people? Right, all right. So now you do know that when you just being honest, not really trusting Come people, on. kind of puts you in a place where you don't really trust God. Come on now. Granted, He is the source, people are the resource. Life moves at the speed of relationship, oh. it's who you connected to now. Anyways, back to the skin. <laughs> So this trust, right. I take it that you've been mishandled. True. Probably okay. being lied to, people constantly letting you down, and oh God, abandonment and rejection. Mm -hmm. Who hasn't dealt with that? Yeah. That that'll cause it seriously. Yeah. So what what else here? See despair. Yeah. The feeling of not having any hope left. Do you feel like you're hopeless? Absolutely, every day. When do you think this started? Um, I guess I would say ever since my mom left. Mm. Ever since my mom pretty much abandoned me and just kind of left me in the arms of my grandmother. So having to, you know, kind of watch her struggle and not really knowing when we were going to be able to eat or, you know, um, if we were even going to be able to have lights. And so I've just had to watch my grandmother and in the midst of that, um, feeling some type of way for not being able to help her and upset with my mom for leaving me. Wow, you know, it's real interesting because one thing that I've learned is that a lot of things that we experience in our childhood, especially the negative things, mm -hmm. it tends to spill over into our adult life, but we don't necessarily um, realize that, you know? And uh, you familiar with triggers? Yes. You familiar with triggers? Yes. Triggers in your body? Yes. Okay. Every, I'm sure we all have them. You get upset, it, it take, set you right on off, you ready to cuss somebody out. That's true. Okay. No. So no. the thing is, with it, a lot of this stuff has carried over into your adult life. It really has. Your mother leaving you, the abandonment, you know? The, the, the distrust, the fear, all of that stems from that, from your childhood. And so now it's a matter of understanding that we see, and I, I see you have anger here. You be slapping people. <laughs> I want to. Jesus Christ, who in here ever slapped somebody before? <laughs> Only two people. Y'all lying. <laughs> okay. Good, so anger, a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. Hmm. <laughs> stress, financial issues, isn't that what you're going through now? Yes, yeah. I'm beyond stress. So this is the thing, we want to change all of this, and I see you have sorrow. Sorrow, weight, heaviness, disheartened, dis-ease. Sadness, misery, regret, gloom, distress. So if sorrow is the root, all that I just read is the stem of it. You see, a lot of times we don't know that. We don't see that. We only go by based on what we see. But as you begin to uproot the actual root, you eventually get the stem. All of that other stuff will die. But so now I see here everything that you, he had already placed in you. I see love. So we have that. Put that on. Hold on to that. It's already there. It's in you. You have it. It's just a matter of not looking at all of this, looking at what's going on around you. Uh -huh. But if you stay focused on him, because again, he told you to think on those things yes, yes. which are lovely. Think on yes. those things which are pure, those things that are true. Do you know his character? Do y'all know his character? Yes. 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 Somewhat. 
someone. So we, we know that we serve a God of love. With love comes patience. With love comes kindness. Can I, shall I go on? Y'all know? So with that, he's already given you that. So in the place of distrust, I want to give you this. You already have it. So this here will help you, the arrows of your heart. It'll help you to follow them. You, you follow your heart, basically. All right? You're going to meet some people who are, let's just be honest, they're going to try and get over. They're going to try and get over, but allow the Holy Spirit to, that dwells in you, because we all have him, to allow the Holy Spirit to kind of lead you and direct you in that regard. Don't become so, uh, don't allow fear to keep you from relationship. Not just romantic relationship, but just relationship, period. Y'all, we need each other. Yeah. For real, for real, we really do. We need each other, regardless of what I look like, regardless of what you look like, regardless of who you sleep with. Amen? Amen. We need each other. So, in the place of despair, you have hope. That's the only thing stronger than fear. So keep your hope. Keep your hope. Hold on to that. And your peace. You got peace. Peace in the place of anger. Walking around here cussing for God. You know you're wrong for that. <laughs> but one thing I want you to hold on to is your dreams. In your dreams is your, you'll find joy. And honestly, all of these things fall in joy or under joy. If you have joy, you'll have love. If you have joy, you'll have peace. If you have joy, you will have comfort. Yes. So those things that God has placed on your heart to do, follow them. Do what you love to do. If it's helping people, do that. Because it's all our job is, is to, we, we have to hold on to that. Hold on to your joy. So this is what we're going to do, okay? We're going to put all this negative mess back in here. And you let this crap stay right where it's at. And you take that. You take your love. You take that. You're filled now. You have what you need. That's all you need right there. Tap into that. Hold on to that. Yeah. Regardless of what comes your way. You remember that. You know what, God? I'm going to focus on the good things. God, I thank you. First of all, it comes through gratitude. Yeah. It comes through gratitude. If you can focus on the things that he's done, the fact that you, you still have life, yeah. that's something that you take for granted. The fact that you can get up and still put, you put your pants on. Come on you know, and if you need a little help, that's okay. You're still here. You're still able to do that. So right there, I want you to take one moment and take some, think of something that you're grateful for. Yeah. Something that you're thankful for. Yeah. And enjoy the new season.
Jesus. Yeah. Well, amen. I didn't even say it. He was yeah. doing your best. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, my goodness. I didn't say blessed in the area of drama and theatrics. Oh. Act. Interpret the any of that. Please get with them to shelter. I see some major things happening. Okay? I, I see things happening. That ministers. That minister the word. I can just go ahead and take up the offering uh, and go home because that minister the word. Hallelujah. Alright, I do have something for you. Right now it's right at eleven o'clock. Alright, and we still want to have um uh, make time for anyone who wants to share a testimony and um, get ready to have a little bit of a praise party and then have our countdown to the new year, all right? So, I, 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 I obviously won't preach as long as I don't want to do, so I'm going to get this in, but I still have a word for you. Amen. And I am depending on leaning on and calling on the Holy Spirit to guide me tonight, all right? I have scriptures, and that's all I have, because I'm believing God. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting ever since... Some folks pulled on us to have this service tonight. Yeah, don't come, yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> come on, brother. You know what? Yes, but thank you, brother, for, for saying, well, I, don't, I, don't, I know we're going to bring in the New Year in the church, right? That's well, I guess we are. <laughs> so, we are here. Thank you, brother. Thank you, minister. Um, and so, I do have a word for you tonight. And if, for those of you who brought your Bibles, and for those of you who did not, we, do, we, we will have them up on the screen. If you will make your way to Isaiah chapter 43, and then put um, your bookmark there, and pull up Amos. Ooh. Amos, right. yeah, it's one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, Amos. I know, right? Amos, God took me to Amos. I was like, well, all right, God. All right, if you get to, let's say, Obadiah, you've gone too far, you get to Jonah, you've gone too far, okay? You, know, you, can, you can easily miss Amos. Well, um, go, to, go to your table of contents. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not mad. And then, of course, we're going to start with Isaiah. If you allow me to take us to the throne of grace before we get started, all right? Heavenly Father, we, we just commit ourselves to you right now, God. Lord, we thank you for gracing us with your holy presence tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, that we have a safe space to come and worship you, God. We thank you, Lord, for the men and women of God who serve you in this ministry, God, who serve us in this ministry, God. Lord, I thank you for the gifts that you have given each one of us, God, that we can minister to one another, Lord, that we can come into a place, God, and see you in each one of our faces, in each one of our words, God, and our actions, God. Lord, so we just lift you up tonight. We lift up this word to you, God. We lift up this year to you, God. And we say thank you, Lord, Amen. that we are all sitting here, Lord, together, alive, breathing, loving you, loving one another, God. So, Lord, I just anoint this word to go forth and accomplish all that you petitioned to do, God, when you gave it to these prophets, Lord. When you gave it to me, Lord, even as I deliver to your people, may it be a double-edged sword to prune me, even as it proves them, God. May it bless us indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We are over here in Isaiah chapter 43. So Isaiah 43, verse 18 through 19, that first line right there should catch and quicken somebody's spirit. Do not remember the former things. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a what? New thing. A new thing. How many are ready for a new thing? Yes. 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 Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let me go back on that. Because I'm not ending the reading of the word of God in the back. Normally I say, so ends the reading of the word of God. Amen. And now I don't know. We're just going to stay there for a minute. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. Look back on your year. Let January fly through your mind. Let's coast through February. Think about March. What were you doing? Think about April. What happened in May? June. How did you spend your July? What was going on in August? 
September, because it's the last time you're going to think about this. October, I'm taking you through it. I'm moving you quickly. Good, good. All right, how were you last month in November? And then as this month comes to a close, let's look at the good parts, the bad parts, and close that chapter. Thank you. Because he says, don't, don't think on the former things or consider the things most. So when you consider something, you think about it. And you all remember, you can say, replay the tape. <laughs> You try to figure stuff out. Why did that happen? How? Did, what was I thinking? How did that come about? And a lot of times we say we want to think about it because we don't want to see it happen again. We don't want to repeat the past. Right. See, but that which you focus on is what manifests. Right. That which you focus on, what you put your attention to, what you think about comes about. Yeah. All right? So if you don't consider that, you won't attract that. You won't manifest that. That's why God tells you what to think on. Because what you focus on comes to pass. All right? Some of y'all have picked it up. Some of y'all walk. <laughs> Jesus was the wokest one in the Bible. I need y'all to understand that the things that you're waking up to, he already wrote it down. Just didn't understand it. Just took it literally. Right. Yeah. Oh, in 2019, begin to read the word. Yes. Please, the word. Yes. Just look at the red letters. Mm -hmm. The secret is in that. That's it. Did y'all hear what I said? The secret mm -hmm. is in the red letters. <laughs> All the laws of the universe is in the red letters. Yes. But okay, we're going to leave that there. Let's get back. Let's get back to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said, I'm about to do a new thing. Don't remember, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. Can you stop rehearsing the script from the past book? Yeah. Some of us are still in the old book, let alone the old chapter. You know, we start a new chapter. No, I start a whole new book. Because that book has come to a close. And see, this is when the glory of God, you know it is strong. When I'm not mad at the past. I'm not mad at the old book. I'm not mad at the old chapter. See, but in order for me to walk into the new thing, I've got to release the old thing. There's simply not enough room in the new wineskins. Excuse me, in the old wineskins for a new wine. Some of you have outgrown your last blessing. Can we not be bitter about the past? Because you got to walk into 2019 understanding that good and great are two different things. Yeah. Right. And sometimes you got to release good in order to get great. Amen. We ain't mad at 2018. I'm not mad at this year. You know, I'm not mad at it. That's mature. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. It was good to me. Because like even if it brought me out of something, it was good to me. Because I could still be in it. That's right. He said, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I, I get tired of people reminding me and telling me of who they used to be. Well, you know, back in the day, I was a track star. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, back in high school, I played ball, you know. Well, you know, I used to, honey, you still living and rehearsing the good you. 20 years later, God's trying to make a great you. But you're still stuck on the good you. Because I can't, I can accept the fact in your senior year. <laughs> I, can, I can accept the fact that in your junior year of college, you, or you were employee of the month at your first job. Hallelujah, your first job. Your first job was 35 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I need you to catch up with God. Because God is trying to break the mold. Ooh, and you're still holding on to the mold and trying to fill the mold. And you're so happy that you fill the mold that God is trying to break the mold and grow you. He's about to do a new thing. Now it springs for do you not perceive it? See, when you perceive something, you discern it, you recognize it. Don't you recognize or don't you discern that I'm trying to do a new thing in you? 
Y'all ever seen anybody hold on to something until their knuckles turn white? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never seen that before? Look at all them brown people like, really? yes, really. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Try this with your little brown child then. Put them on the monkey bars. And the, uh, do they even still have those in playgrounds, public playgrounds, like the little monkey bars and stuff like that? Put them on the monkey bars. Mm -hmm. Walk away and let them hang there for a minute. Mm -hmm. They'll be hanging up <laughs> until their little brown knuckles turn white. You ever been in a car accident and your hand was on that steering wheel? And right now, that's what I'm talking about. And that's how hard many of us hold on. Don't you perceive that God's trying to do a new thing? When you were in the, the drama and you talked about the fear, fear will keep you stagnant. Fear will paralyze you. And it's not even a fear of failure. Sometimes it's not a fear of failure. And people say, you know, well, that you have a fear, you have a fear of success. How can I have a fear of success? I mean, who wouldn't want to succeed? When we don't trust that we can maintain that success, then we will underachieve and underachieve and underachieve. And we'll just hold on. You know, I don't want to get promoted. I don't want to get promoted in my job because I do this job very well. See, but I know that there's going to be a, like a six-month period where I'm not going to be the best at my new job because I'm just learning it. I'm going to make mistakes, and I'm used to being a superstar in my department. I'm used to being a superstar in my job. I'm, I, no, I'm in your kitchen. You don't have to shout right now. I'm in your kitchen because I can see it on your faces. I'm just intruding all in your cabinets. I'm cooking the bacon because I don't eat bacon. <laughs> so I'm cooking it all up. I'm in your business right now. <laughs> Hold it on. White knuckles. He said, don't you discern? Don't you recognize what I'm trying to do? Let go. Mm -hmm. So I can move you up. So I can expand you. I will make a way in the wilderness. Anybody ever been in the wilderness? Yes. Literal and spiritual. You don't always know your way out. Yes. You recognize that you're in it. And you don't always know the way out. He said, I will make a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. A river in the desert that's not an oasis? That's not a mirage, rather? A river in a desert in dry places. I'm going to have a flowing river come through just to you. You won't be parched. You won't be without. You're going to be refreshed mm -hmm. in the desert, y'all. So first of all, we got to let go of the old thing because God's trying to do a new thing. Now, can we get to the good part? Can you go for Amos? Because this is about to bless you. It blesses me. Amos chapter 9, verse 1. I want to. I want you to put up. I put um, up 13 through 15. That's what I'm focusing on. But I got to go back. And start you at, um, I'm going to start reading at 11. And let me give you the backdrop. Because this here, if you are, are in like your physical body, the subject of chapter uh, 9 is the destruction of Israel. And then right where we're going to pick up in verse 11 is the restoration of David's kingdom. So, if you in your life, if you didn't have to put your hand up, although this crowd will always put their hand up, like I testify. <laughs> like, don't put your hand up. It was me, Lord. <laughs> you don't care. I don't even care. It was me. If you ever had God destroy things in your life, now hold on. Hold on. Because God is a God of abundance. God is life. God is never just going to, He always has a purpose. He didn't come to harm you, but to. So understand this. But there have been people, can I minister to you for a moment? Mm -hmm. There have been people and institutions and, and thoughts and generational things and, and just things that have encamped around you and that have enclosed you in, that have trapped you, that have stolen from you, that have tricked you, deceived you, set you up, and you find yourself in a set of circumstances, an entire life setup. That in order for God to get you out of it, he's got to take all of it down. He's got to destroy all of it. Have you ever had God just assemble your life just to get you out? Have you ever had God use the jaws of life on your life to get you out? So in the moment, it looks like everything's falling apart. He's taking the door off the car. He's taking the, the top off. He's taking the, the hood off. He's taking the trunk out. 
when, and after that, y'all know the stock market crashed, the housing market crashed, and I had people close to me who have, are still stuck in their house because of what happened mm-hmm. back in 9-11. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I don't want that story. I don't want that horror story. Y'all know in our finances, I was study, there were some of us who were like, I, I, don't even, I don't want to be trapped in a mortgage. And so I said, I always want to be free. Because we live at a time, I grew up in a time where I came of age as an adult in a time where it wasn't easy to sell a house. So if I needed to move, I could get strapped with a mortgage and a rent or lease or a mortgage in the next place so I have to stay away from it. I didn't see that happening in my life. I didn't even want it. 2012, because of horrible fibroids, I had a full hysterectomy, I had a full, but I had a hysterectomy. It was the well, only one of two times I've not preached in my pulpit and was actually in the building. <laughs> Y'all know I did that with my dental surgery. Mm-hmm. I filmed it, <laughs> but I had, had my hysterectomy. Never thought I'd have children again. That took me into a different place. I was, I, was not, I was not well with that decision, but I chose my health. Never thought I'd have children again. After all the mistakes in life I made in my love life, I didn't see myself being married. The twists and turns of this ministry. Now, this ministry, I know, I've always known this ministry is going to stand. But we took some hits. You hear me? There's been some roller coasters and some twists and turns. We took some hits. So my life at different times over the past few years didn't look like the promises were going to be true or be fulfilled. And yet here I stand. And yet here I stand. And all of this is taking place in the past two and a half years. When I tell you guys a rest that can restore, God has restored my name. God has given me my marriage. God has given me a new baby. I have I'm a homeowner. I, my, look at my church. On a watch night service. Amen. Glory. But I ain't gonna lie to y'all and tell y'all, oh my God, I've been running to keep up with God. Running to keep up with God. My testimony is to bless you, ain't to bless you with the understanding that if you lost time, you better buckle your seatbelt. You better buckle your seatbelt because when restoration comes, it comes when God is fast forward and it, He gives you back everything. You thought you lost everything you gambled away, everything the enemy stole from you, everything you thought you had timed out of. I listen to Andrew remind me, you know you're going to be 60 when Mackenzie is uh, graduating from high school. Tell that joker. <laughs> At least she's going to graduate. Because right. <laughs> I know I'm paying. I got to go right to the jugular. <laughs> I love my son. But, you know, he, go, he, he can go toe to toe with me. But God will get it right back to you. And I mean, fast forward. So you get ready. What the pastor said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. No joke. And so when the blessing comes, look at Amos. Verse 12, verse 11, he said, On that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches. In verse 12, he said, I was saying, raise up its ruins and rebuild it in the days of old, in order that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this. Look at verse 13. The time is surely coming. Receive this for yourself, says the Lord. When the one who plows shall overtake the one who reaps, and the treader of grapes the one who sows the seed, the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them upon their land, they shall never again be plucked up out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. Now, I only got 35 minutes, and I'm not even taking that much time. But I'm about to go over here to verse 13, break that down for you, bless you, and we're going to call it a party. Mm. <laughs> verse 13, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of your members is a DJ. 
I never know what can happen. He said, the time is surely coming, says the Lord, when the one who plows shall overtake the one who reaps, the tread of grapes, the one who sows the seed. I need to get Can I get your volunteers? Can I get, I need a couple. Can I get, I'm going to get you this thing. Hey, you don't mind. I gotta, I, when I look at this, it just, oh, it blesses me so. It blesses me so. When I researched this, it blessed me so. And if you will stand over there, just tell him to stand up. Tell him, 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 tell The time is surely coming, says, but when the one who plows shall overtake the one who reaps. You're plowing, and you're tilling the ground for the seeds to be sown. Mm -hmm. You are reaping the harvest from last season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and the seasons were supposed to go like this. In October, October is the, um, the, the, the harvest season. And by the time you get back around the spring, it's time to sow and everything. So there's a time period, though, between the harvest and the seed planting and the time when you got to wait for the harvest to come back up again. See, what, what the Bible said, what the prophet said, was that there's going to be a time when the one who plows shall overtake the one who reaps. So let's say you're reaping over this reason. You are reaping. You got your sickle. You're cutting down the wheat. You are reaping the harvest. Harvest come up, you're reaping. It's only supposed to take you. There's only enough harvest for this to happen now. Wait a minute, month. Month of reaping, the inner harvest. It's a big field or whatever. All right? So you over here, you're reaping. You're reaping. See, but she got so much reaping to do because the harvest is so big that it takes her all the way over here to this time for you to come and begin tilling this ground for more seed to come back. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 There's abundance, yes. and then there's overflow. Oh, come through. While you still reaping the harvest, mm -hmm. she don't come back around. Come on back around here. Come on. And then she'll meet you back in the field to put more seed down. You're like, let me hold on, baby. Let me finish getting the harvest from last year. She's like, oh, no, no, it's time to put more seed around. You don't realize you've been pulling up the wheat this whole time.
put some things on vision board. I dare you to put some things before God. I dare you to put a list in. Yeah. I was thinking about the day in my bedroom. I'm walking around. I said, you know what, God? You are the God of the, the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> you are the God of the bottom. Forget my notes. You, you are the God of the bottom of the ninth. But some of us don't wait. See, I'm that fan. I'm that fan that's going to watch the game until the last second on the clock. Because anything can happen. Right. Anything can happen. When I was in ninth grade, my high school football team became the national champion. And we're on USA Today. It was the Grange High Rangers. And we went 16 games that season because they just kept winning, kept winning. Oh, let me on the street. And it was my freshman year of high school. I was in the um in the band on the color guard and stuff. And so we are we are freezing there because it's going into December at that point. And so I've seen what can happen when I'm sitting in that game, y'all. And it's like we were neck and neck, and we didn't know we were gonna win or not. We ain't never did anything like that. Now, national champ, we been state champ, regional, whatever. National champ, and it all came down to one kick. <laughs> the clock was what we went overtime and everything, and we didn't know what was gonna happen. At that time, there people crying and going on because I mean, I was an avid high school football fan, and I mean, really. And so we cried, and we don't, we don't know what we're going to do. People are throwing the instruments down. We don't end on the mat anymore. Everybody getting ready to rush this to the, the, the field. And I mean, it was intense. And it got to what was a tie. Oh, God. They put Scott in. I don't remember the man's name, but they put Scott in. And they were like, we're going to try to get the field going. It was fall. It was fall. Scott, dumb as bricks, can kick like I mean, the fucking kick. But he was a senior and he was in my science class, so I, he went too bright. You should be in my freshman science class, but it's all right. That baby won us that championship. So they sent Scott in. Scott went up there, y'all know how those beautiful kickers kick the little foot, you know. He went right, he did his thing, y'all. Boom, the whole thing of erupted. LaGrange, Jordan, ain't never one of those state. No, no, I'm national. I know what can happen at the last seconds of the game. I am that person. See, wherever else I left, <laughs> I'm still sitting waiting, but anything can happen. So when I tell you, oh my God, when I tell you that, this year alone, when I tell you that there's some things that I sat on, yeah. and God is, yes, my, yes, wife, and God is brought to pass in the bottom of the night, God said, I'm going to do it this year. Yeah. There's some things that came to pass this week <laughs> that God said it, and I wasn't going to give up. And well, you know, maybe next year. No, he said this year, bottom of the night. Everybody else done left the stadium. I'm still the fool sitting in this witness the miracle when they hit it, knocked it out of the park. The whole game changes. Anybody ever been a part of a game change with God? People had counted you out. They had counted that opportunity out. You had counted the opportunity out. Let's tell the truth. You had packed up your stuff too. Well, it don't look like we're going to do it this year, y'all. So. Well, you know, we had a good year. They had a good year. They still playing. Well, we had a good year, y'all. We'll see y'all next year. Well, and then next thing you know, the outlaw announced to come out of nowhere. And, and a little upset. Whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Thank God. Oh, my God. Yes. Amen, God. Yes. Amen, God. Yes. Amen, God. Yes. Amen, God. When I look around just at the composition of our church yeah. on recent Sundays, the people prayed for that. Mm -hmm. My wife and I prayed for the diversity. Yeah. Amen. We prayed for a praise and worship team. How, long, how many years we been praying for this, minister? Yeah. Elder, how long have we been praying for this? But something about this year, we got really serious. I said, this is what will be. And God said, you're finally ready. What did I just preach about on Sunday? What did I just preach about? There are certain things that only get unlocked with maturity. You got to reach a certain level in your maturity, in your character, in how you show up. You can't get mad at anybody.
anybody else? In 2019, can we start taking personal accountability for us? There's no blaming next year. You don't have time to blame somebody else, but when you blame somebody else, you put your life in their hands. And you gotta wait for them to do something in order for something to happen in your life. I refuse to live that way. I refuse to live that way. I refuse to live that way. People have shown me that if I put my life, my neck, anything in your hands, I can end up in a because ultimately, we all going to look out for number one first. We're supposed to. We're supposed to. Because if I'm good, if I'm in, if I'm in overflow, I can go over to you. Yeah. Ooh. We got to get this right in 2019, y'all. Lord, we love you. God, we love you. Lord, we receive the blessing that shows us, that, that pours into our life in such a way that even as we are already reaping the blessing, yeah. we have already double round. It don't have to be couple singles. We understand this. Even as you are pulling up your harvest and counting your blessings, you got some stuff waiting for you right behind you. So when you turn around, you're like, oh, another blessing just showed up. I just took a count of these. And next thing I know, here comes something else. I receive God. I receive it for my neighbor. I receive it for the person on the road. I receive it for the entrepreneurs in the building. I receive it for the dreamers in the building. I receive it for the couples and the singles in the building. I receive it for our children in the building. I receive that. We have worked. You have believed. You have been steadfast. Give yourself some credit. Give yourself some credit. Sunday before last, and it, 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 it was a hard road and a lot of lessons, but I found peace. Amen. Yes. Peace. Woo. I feel this peace, something I've never felt in my entire life. 
I mean, after 30 something years of addiction, and I'm thinking like, okay, once I stop drinking and doing drugs, then everything's gonna fall into place. And I realized that I was trying to find that peace in other people. Mm -hmm. In other people. And I couldn't quite figure out why I kept ending up in the same predicament over and over and over from 2014 till about four months ago. And it was because what I was searching for wasn't out there. It wasn't out there. It was right here. It was right here. And I have this incredible sense of peace. And on social media, people are like, oh, leave all this in 2018. I can't wait to keep you. You know what? I'm embracing 2018 because one thing that happened for me is growth. Yeah. It's great. And our God is amazing because certain things I never prayed for or whatever, but he would just miraculously put stuff in front of me. And I'm not talking about materialistic things. I'm not talking about money or anything. I'm talking about his word. And it was funny how whatever we would be going through here, Somehow he would make it run parallel with what I'm learning in school, right down to the religion class that I just took. So that just further solidifies his word. And I realized that the peace that I've been looking for is with God and myself. And as I sit back in 2019, now I know that I'm shored up for the blessings that he has coming my way because I'm not out there looking for it in, oh, you know, oh, somebody to feed into my ego and all this other, just this external stuff, all this external stuff. I'm learning to love God and to love me and everything else is gonna fall into place. Yeah. 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 So, um, surprisingly or shockingly, I'm a man of few words, but I'm a bishop elect. But anywho, um, <laughs> uh, I would say 2018, let me backtrack a few months prior to 2018. Um, 2017, at the close of 2017, I, um, just like many of us, when God tells us to do something, to leave something, to drop something, to um, let some things go, we tend to um, hold on to it. Mm -hmm. We hold on to it. We, um, as uh, Pastor has said, we get that white knuckle. But um, in holding on to that thing when God told you to let it go, um, you find yourself and in a place where you're shaken, not, not shaken, you're in turmoil. Um, you're not at peace. Um, everything around you is off kilter. You are off kilter. Um, and so at the last few months of 2017, God had told me to leave the DMV area. This was around maybe June, July time frame. God told me to leave. Um, he told me to let some people go. He told me, um, there were many things that he told me to do, but I, me being the, the uh, optimistic person, looking at the person, seeing good in the, in the people, God, you, told, you gave me this to, you know, to, <clears throat> and so, but when he told me to let um, to let this, those things go and to let the people go, I questioned. I, I 
uh, um, I question was that really God telling me to to let those things go, to let people go. But as I continued through the months of holding on to those people, holding on to those things, holding on to my apartment, holding on to a best friend, best friends, holding on to a ministry that wasn't mine to begin with, but to keep the doors open. Um, I found myself depleted, lost myself, lost my thinking. Um, and so in December of 2017, God stripped me of everything, everything. But in the midst of that, God brought me up an individual that flows with me spiritually that is shocking. And he told me to come here. The moment I moved here, 2018, well, November 2017, got into massage school. Um, January, started working at Express. Um, life was moving. But then, we, we, we tend to call, we tend to attach a lot of things onto, the, onto Satan, the enemy, the devil. But I looked back and was thinking, oh, I had all of these things. And here I am in South Carolina and I have to find all of this all over again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Start, starting from nothing to, to get to a place where God, hey, a few years ago you said I'm gonna have all of this, but I'm in a place of desolation so I can. <clears throat> and come April, I wanted to leave massage school because I wanted to uh, make the union of my household stronger. I wanted to find a job that was more stable. Wanted to um, uh, provide financially to um, my household. And me being in school during the day didn't afford me that opportunity. And I didn't want to work at night because I would take away from it. So, <clears throat> Um, so I continued with school, graduated with my certification in massage therapy, um, found the way, <laughs> <laughs> found the way, and ever since I've been here, when I tell you ministry is just flowing more rapidly than it was before, um, visions coming back that I used to have when I was little. Um, uh, just things just flowing more fluently and more frequently. And to now have a place, a home with my husband now, <clears throat> um, with a dog. <laughs> and we're thinking about having kids. And, uh, come January, we may push um, push the appointment off um, later because of our ceremony that we're going to have. Um, we're thinking about a house, and hopefully before the end of, the, of 2019, I'll have my license and I'll have a car. Um, <laughs> um, but and then also in September, I'll be opening up a ministry of my own. God's hand um, that God gave to me and I, it was handed to me to um, keep open. But I'm here to say that whatever dreams, whatever visions, whatever God has given to you, yes, 
you may go through some things to get to that destination, and it may look like you are off alignment or you're off kilter or you're um, falling off track, but if you stay focused on him, mm -hmm. if you stay focused on him, have that tunnel vision, everything else is gonna fall into place. Yes, Lord. And I made a post today and I said that 2018 was my, my year of restoration. It has been my year of restoration. Yes. And I'm looking forward to 2019 because it's only going to get better. Amen. And that's, that's all. <laughs> all right, we got like um like nine minutes, so we're gonna let the we're gonna crank the music up and give y'all a chance to use the bathroom whatever you want to do before you get in position to be who you want to be next to when the clock strikes off and by my countdown that starts at um, five minutes till. And um, we will be here, you know, of course, a little bit after midnight. So if anybody did want to do their testimony, then we'll still be here. Um, like I said on Facebook, we got some people, some anonymous donors who made it possible for us to have um, brunch in the back, all right? We got biscuits, we got fruit, we got juice, we got all kinds of stuff in the back. We can make some coffee if you want to. But um, so the night's not over, right? Let's praise God. I want you to see the countdown go up. Let's get ready to welcome in the new year. All right.